Hey everyone, Cassie Draws here and welcome to today's video. Today's painting is one of my most difficult pet portraits to date, so I'm going to lead you through my process step by step painting this beautiful tortoiseshell cat using acrylic. Let's go ahead and get started. To start off our painting today, I'm going to go ahead and use a small round brush. You can use whichever you prefer, but for the eyes in this area of the painting, my small round will do just fine. And a color combination of Mars Black, Burnt Umber, and Titanium White together. So I've mixed essentially a nice natural charcoal color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and basically block in the outline of the eyes, the nose, and all the important information that I can see within this face that I don't want to lose as I start layering my paint. So essentially I'm mapping out the anatomy of this cat's face before I start getting really heavy into the fur layering and really just creating this painting essentially. So I can count so many times that I've created a painting and went, oh shoot, that eye is way off or you know, that nose is way too long based on my reference. So I've just kind of made this a habit and I hope you find it helpful in your own art journeys as well. And again, every artist is Different. So I encourage you to use whatever method you feel comfortable using and just if you want to omit this step you can totally do that too. But you can see here I have a really nice basic outline which allows me to kind of feel a little bit more confident moving into the next stage of this painting. So the next step we're going to do is to get a base preliminary layer down for this cat's fur. So just like the outline around the eyes and the nose, I do like to block in the areas around this cat's face to again, solidify the anatomy and making sure that everything is where it should be. So I'm going to start with this beautiful beige, which is that signature sort of tortoiseshell color or marking. And I'm going to go ahead and block that in all around my portrait. And once that's dry, I'm going to come in with a darker color, which will be the sort of dark brown charcoal color of this tortoiseshell cat. And I'm just gonna go ahead and block that in around the face. Now you can see here that I'm using a very, very wet brush. This is almost reminiscent of a watercolor. And the reason being is because I don't wanna go too heavy into these colors and just lose my way. So you're kind of tag teaming this um, sort of translucent layer and that initial outline to really build a nice foundation of this portrait. Now, once the initial wash is dry on the face, I'm going to do the exact same steps on the shoulder, back, and sort of chest area of this cat. Now, something to note as well in this section of the painting, I did go a little bit more opaque than that face wash. So I don't have nearly as much water in this area. And that's because there's not as much crucial information like eye placement and anatomy that I needed to worry about. So I just went in with a little bit more opaque of a paint to give myself a guide. Now the next step in our painting, we're going to want to add in a little bit more of an opaque acrylic now. So really just working on those secondary layers and continuing to flesh out this portrait. So I'm going to start with the eyes. I'm giving them a little bit of a base. So I've mixed my titanium white, phthalo blue, and some cadmium yellow together to create this really nice, sweet, minty color. Kind of reminds me of mint chocolate chip a little bit. So that was kind of fun and an interesting color to mix. So I've got my base layer down for this eye. And then of course, as that's drying, I like to keep my productivity high. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears to getting the sort of base layer of this fur down and making sure that my color mixture is to match my reference. So to make this particular color, I mixed my Mars Black a little bit of titanium white, and of course some burnt umber and burnt sienna in some areas to make this a sort of charcoal, but a warmer sort of charcoal color. So I'm just going in blocking this around the sort of eye area and a little bit of the cheek kind of getting started in those areas, but just to give myself a really good foundation to work from and just continue to add. Now I'm using a filbert. I'm always trying to mention my brushes. I know that's one thing that you guys have always asked me for is some brush information. So I always try to remember now, but I'm using my Filbert brush. This is a medium size, so nothing too crazy. Um, but at times I may switch over to a round brush depending on the type of look that I'm going for. So between a square, a Filbert, or a round, that would work well for really all the steps in this painting that we've completed so far. 
So the next thing that I want to complete is the eyes of this portrait. I always like to get them done first as I find it really sets the tone for the painting and especially when it comes to commissions and pet portraits, I do want to make sure that I achieve the likeness to the subject and the reference. So I'm going to go ahead and finish those off. Now with my eyes, the basic sort of rule of thumb that I follow is working from dark to light from back to front. So I'm going to look at all of these layers within this eye and find the darkest areas that I can. So in and around this pupil up towards the top, there is a more heavy shadow, any sort of um, markings or color changes. I'm adding those in all with my dark shadows first. Then I'm going to come in with a, for this instance, a lighter green mid-tone just to kind of bring back any lighter color if I think that these shadows have gone too dark. And then the last step being adding in that sort of lighter green highlight. So a very, very light minty green. I'm coming in around the edges. There's some sort of highlights around the pupil as well. I'm going to add those in with the highlight too. There is many different ways to complete this step. So I always say to kind of work with the system and way that works for you. Now I've gone in and I've kind of redone my uh, sort of outline because we've kind of covered over it with a lot of the base layers. So I wanted to go in with my outline color and just kind of finalize that shape once more if I need to make them a little thinner, a little bit wider. And then afterwards I came in with a nice glaze towards the top of the eye to indicate a deeper shadow. So a glaze is where I'm really watering down that acrylic paint, dropping that in with a blender brush and really kind of just blending that out. Adding in the highlights with a little bit of a titanium white phthalo blue mixture and my Molotow pen to top it off where that really pinpoint highlight and that's pretty much it for the construction and the completion of these eyes. Very very straightforward. Um, nothing too challenging with these. I was really really happy with it and it's really just a matter of getting those shadows and those lights to look correct. Now the next step in our painting is we're going to add in a further shadow to the left hand side of this face. So I'm always wanting to work in a sort of puzzle piece type way. I like to finish certain areas first and then move on to others. Now you can complete this step all over the portrait, adding in all of the shadows that you can see, or if you wanted to do it just one piece at a time like I am, you can do that as well. Now I'm going in with my filbert and I'm just adding in some darker hairs where I feel as though it is not dark enough. So I'm adding in these shadows where I see the fur folding, maybe the angle of this cat's face is kind of hiding from the light a little bit. So I definitely wanted this much darker. And of course, the sort of tortoiseshell marking was not really on this side of the face. So I was pretty much working with this charcoal color exclusively and then adding in a little bit of Mars black um, into it as well, a little bit further to darken that up. Now I'm changing to my liner brush in certain areas where this fur gets really sort of fluffy and kind of almost like looks like freshly brushed. So I'm using my filbert to get those really dark um, sort of larger chunk areas done and then coming in with my liner over top to soften it out a little bit. Now you can see here that I'm adding in a little bit of a color change. I apologize too, my camera seems to want to focus on my hand and my drawing sleeve more so than the painting. So I apologize for this part. Hopefully you can still see, but I'm adding in a little bit of a color change. So there was a little bit of a softer marking. So I'm adding in this burnt umber mixture with a little bit of burnt sienna and Mars black. And I'm coming in with my liner brush and just adding these in selectively. Now keep in mind as well, it kind of looks a little bit thrown onto this portrait. And what you're going to do once you have these markings in is come in over top with that charcoal color once more, as you can see I'm doing here, and just kind of cover over it a little bit and integrate it into the portrait. So oftentimes I see a lot of artists, they will just do a color change or they will add in a marking and forget to come in with that original color over top. This happens a lot with tigers, tiger stripes, adding in that stripe and then that orange color over top to kind of blend it into the painting, the illustration or the design. So just keep that in mind that we're going to want to really integrate it back into this cat's face. Now, while I've been blabbing here about integrating paint, um, I've added in some highlights and some markings with a little bit of a softer gray tone. So I've added in some titanium white 
to my original charcoal color and I've just added in underneath the eyes there was a lot of sort of lighter hairs this cat was a little bit older so I added in a little bit of some lighter hairs under there with my liner brush and then I've slowly also added in a little touch of orange towards the top as well now what I'm doing is I basically have these three, four, five colors already mixed on my palette ready to go. And that way I could just kind of dabble back and forth integrating them into each other and really getting some cool color mixes. You can see here that I've added in that dark brown with that orange to create a really kind of cool custom color to kind of really get that gradient the way that I want it to look. So the next step in this painting is I'm going to go ahead and block in this beautiful orange brown color to the center of this cat's face. And this is this classic, very notable uh, tortoiseshell marking on these cats. So I'm just going in blocking in this base uh, in the center as well as working in a base color for the muzzle. And I'm doing this now because I know that I'm going to have to combine the left and the right side of the face eventually. And I'm just trying to save myself some time waiting for this to dry as I go on and work in other areas. Now, once you've completed that, I'm going to add in a touch of glazing to the left side. So that's dry now and I can go over with my glaze and really just soften some areas of this cat painting. So the areas that I didn't want to remix a color for or I just want to darken a little bit in a very subtle way, I'm bringing my small blender brush, which by the way, these are fantastic. If you have not used a blender brush, I definitely encourage you to do so. Go try it. Let me know down below what you think. And I'm just going in with a very light wash of Mars Black to soften these areas. So some of these markings in and around the uh, muzzle area under the eye. And then, of course, the ones on the side as well. Just softening those up a little bit. Now, while I've been blabbing here, I'm just going ahead and adding in a base layer now to the ear. So I've chosen this sort of brown, muddy color. And the reason why I chose this color to work with is it's a really nice middle ground. So I knew there were some areas that I would need to lighten and there were some areas that I would need to darken as well. So it was kind of a really nice, versatile color. So I blocked that all in with my Filbert brush. And from there, what I'm going to do is block in the large chunks or clumps of hair that I can see in this ear that are kind of sprouting outwards. So this essentially is going to work as my base once I refine these little hairs a little bit further and get them a little bit more wispy. And this, this cat actually had a lot of hair in its ears. So I knew this would be a really, really good foundation for it. Now I'm going to add in some glazes. I'm going to bring my liner brush in and just refine this ear a little bit further. There's always these little wispy hairs that kind of come off of a cat's ear especially long-haired cats. I find them very, very prevalent. So I'm adding this in, extending it beyond my subject and actually out into the canvas. And that's a big piece of advice, especially with the ears that I can recommend is really bringing these hairs and these details beyond the portrait itself and into the background. It makes it look so much more realistic than things just starting and stopping. So it may feel weird to kind of go into your fresh, clean background. You're like, oh, the background is so perfect. It looks so great and it's so smooth. And then you kind of throw some hairs on it and you're like, it just feels messy. Maybe it's me. Let me know. But extending those hairs out into the background really does enhance the realism and just the overall feel of the portrait. It doesn't feel so stuck. I can get on rants all day, but let's move on. So I'm going to go ahead and add in that signature orange brown. Now the color mixture for that is some cadmium red, cadmium yellow. I added in some titanium white. So I made like a really sort of soft orange, kind of like a creamsicle. And then from there, I added in a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber to just naturalize it a little bit more, make it a little bit more natural. Now I'm adding in some whiskers. Normally, this is really actually strange for me. And even doing the voiceover now, I'm kind of confused why I did them now. Normally, I wait until the very end. But for anyone who is wondering how to do this, I use my Molotol uh, acrylic pump marker in white. So it is a fine point. I, I basically did these quick little strokes of this pen and then went over a glaze on top with Mars Black to soften them a little bit further. Now, you can see here that in some areas I've decided that it's just not 
orange enough. So I'm really coming in with this orange glaze and really pumping this color up. So I thought it was a little bit muted at this point, a little bit muddy. So I'm really mixing my cadmium red and my um, cadmium yellow with a little bit of titanium white and burnt sienna and coming in and blocking in these beautiful oranges. And even just doing this now, you can really start to see that signature tortoiseshell start to shine through. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and add in a light cream color over top of this really nice, beautiful orange. And this is going to act as our highlight. So tortoiseshells, their signature fur is a lot of different color changes and just really such a beautiful, gorgeous pattern. And this was arguably the most difficult part of this painting was to nail this texture, this feeling. And of course, every tortoiseshell cat is different. So really following closely to my reference and trying to get each and every hair and color correct. Now, my biggest piece of advice when you're painting a tortoiseshell cat is to have probably five to six different colors mixed on your palette ready to go. So I had three different shades of orange. I had two to three shades of brown. I had even some lighter cream colors, eggshells. So probably honestly, even closer to 10. And what I did was every single time my brush left this canvas to my palette paper, I was mixing a new unique color. There are, and in this reference alone, so many different shifts and variations that that was the thing that worked best for me and I found the most effective. So I wasn't pulling my hair out trying to get all of these colors correct. I kind of already had a good idea of what was there and I could just kind of grab and go as I went. Now I'm using my small round brush, but you can use your liner brush, whatever works best for you. And I'm just going around this area, filling in everything that I can see. So if you ever feel as though you're getting lost, you don't know where to go with your painting. Just remember working from shadow to light from back to front. So I'm finding all the areas that are very heavily shadowed, blocking those in, whether they're a color change from a dark red to a dark orange or a dark orange to a dark brown, getting all of those shadows blocked in and then coming in with my middle tone, bringing back some of that lighter color. And then of course, adding in the highlights selectively over top. Now it's important to remember with your highlight, especially with these tortoiseshells, is that you want to make sure that some of that original color remains underneath. So that sort of really vibrant orange, I still want to shine through. I don't want to come in with too much of a highlight over top and change this color to a light beige or a light eggshell and kind of remove that orange. So just keep that in mind. Now, of course, in my usual fashion here, I'm adding in the whiskers with my Molotol acrylic pump marker. You can use your liner brush with really watered down titanium white paint, whatever works best for you. I just blocked in that left-hand side and I probably at this point just wanted to get that side of the face completed. So I just went ahead and added that in. Now I'm going to go ahead and rinse and repeat the exact same steps on the right side of the ear now with my liner and my filbert brush. Now with cats, I always find with cats that one ear, depending on the angle of the portrait, one ear is always very, very different. So this ear on the right was much lighter, definitely not as dark. And so I was able to kind of keep some of that really nice brown sort of orange tone within that ear itself. And again, just working through these color changes adding in the really soft, beautiful hairs and remembering to integrate all of these different colors by adding in that sort of darker color over top and just softening this gradient. Now, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to rinse and repeat the steps we used on the left-hand side of the face, and we're going to do them on the right side now. So I've got multiple colors mixed on my palette, seven to eight colors ready to go. And I'm going to follow my reference and block in all of the markings that I can see. Now, again, if you feel as though you go a little bit too light, since tortoiseshells sometimes have very almost two different sides to their face at times, or maybe just feel like you've gone too far with these markings, added a little bit too much. Don't be afraid to hit the reset button and add in that charcoal color back over top and kind of soften it up a little bit or completely restart the area as well. It's definitely, um, you know, saves a lot of time just sometimes hitting the restart button rather than having to fuss and fight with these color changes. So at times I felt like I needed to do that. Um, this piece was really quite challenging, as I said in the beginning of this video 
video, one of the most difficult pet portraits I've had purely because of the confusing pattern, but I always find that it works out in the end and it really is always worth it. Now, what I'm doing is I'm adding in some Mars Black to areas that I think need the shadow or need to be a little bit more contrasted. So normally I try to work with a Mars Black and a Burnt Umber together, but for this portrait, I really wanted to punch in those black values because there was a lot of orange, there was a lot of brown. I just wanted to make sure that that original charcoal black color did not get lost in this painting. So I'm adding that in very selectively. I'm not going crazy with this, but I'm going very selectively around this portrait and adding in these markings where I see that they may fit or kind of help with the anatomy as well. Because really above all else, we want to make sure that this portrait looks like their pet, but of course looks anatomically correct as well. We are nearing the finish line with this painting. So the last step for us today is to complete the sort of back, shoulder, and the front of this cat's chest. Now, this section I wanted to be a little bit smoother, not as refined. So I'm taking my larger filbert and my smaller filbert, and I'm just going in with three to four different variations of my orange and my brown tone. And this cat was very, very fluffy, had a lot of thick clumps of hair, and also a very specific red-orange color. So you can see here that I'm just using my filbert to my advantage, the natural sort of brush stroke that it achieves, a very thick base leading to a very thin sort of tail of a brush stroke. And I'm kind of just working in the large clumps of hair that I can see. And this part was really fun for me as I felt I could kind of let go a little bit. Um, usually my work is very, very refined, very rigid at times. So myself as an artist, I'm trying to grow and really work on getting a little bit of blurriness or kind of that effect of like a faded, not as in focus look. Um, and so that's what I was really trying to achieve here. Now, at times you may find that this coat color is a little bit difficult. So what I always recommend doing is if you have a color that is very translucent, for example, burnt sienna, burnt sienna is notorious for being very translucent and really sometimes quite a really hard color to use. What I did was I added in a lighter sort of peachy beige color. And then I came in once it was dry with my burnt sienna and a little bit of red over top to get that really nice coppery color. And so using that sort of opaque white or beige base and using that color in over top is kind of one of the tips and tricks that I learned that has really changed the way that I paint. So hopefully you find that helpful. It also works with some yellow tones as well. You can see I'm adding in some yellow and by adding it to that white base, it really does pop right off the canvas. So the last step in our painting is to add in a little bit of a finer detail. So I'm going in with my liner brush on top of these clumps of the sort of filbert brush strokes that I did. And I'm adding in a little bit of a flare, a little bit of a feather, just to show that there are some thinner hairs on these clumps as well. And they're not all one brush stroke or one look. It kind of really adds a nice texture. I'm adding in some shadows to underneath the chin area on this chest, as well as towards the bottom. Bottom, and then coming in with my really light white highlight, which is the lightest part of this subject. And really just seeing that pop with that orange makes me so happy. It really is such a nice contrast. So I'm using the exact same techniques, getting in those clumps of hair with my filbert and then coming in with my liner brush just to kind of add a little bit of definition and some more detailing as well. So the last step in our painting is to go ahead and do what I like to call the finishing details of a portrait. And that can range from the nose to the eyebrow hairs to the whiskers, any sort of area on the painting that I feel might need a little bit of extra love. I try to take a step back and look at this painting, even if I put it up on an easel or on the wall, just to kind of take a step back and really look at any areas that I may have missed. Sometimes we are so close to the subject and our painting that we can miss these little things that really do make a big difference. So I encourage you to take a step back from your artwork and really just look at it even the next day, kind of see where you're at and what might need a little bit of extra love. So I'm going ahead adding in those whiskers. I've added in some glazing underneath the chin in the sort of neck and sort of shoulder area, adding any sort of highlights or whiskers and things that I feel need the attention and really just working on finishing this up and getting it shipped off to my client. 
All right, and there you have it. There is our finished pet portrait painting. I hope you enjoyed today's video. A big shout out to our channel sponsors, Chartpack, Grumbacker, and Molotov for sponsoring today's video, as well as my content here on YouTube and on Twitch. Their links can be found in the description box below, as well as places where to purchase their products for your own art toolkit. Of course, a big shout out to our Kofi VIPs of the month. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to be featured, you can go ahead and check out Kofi.com slash Cassie Draws and check out our membership tiers. And last but not least, a big thank you to you for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and hit the little subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I upload next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.